Portworx has always been a tremendous partner to our customers, right? I mean, we don't look at ourselves as a vendor. We actually look at it as an extension of our customers, this team. Welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Venkat Ramakrishnan, Vice President of Products and Engineering for Portworx by Pure Storage. Venkat, it's great to have you on the show. Swapnil, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, we have covered Pure Storage Portworx earlier, but it's always a good idea to just quickly brief folks what are you, what are you folks all about? So Portworx uh, uh, is a um, data management platform for Kubernetes, um, more than just a data management platform. We handle everything from uh, the, the data for Kubernetes from cradle to grave. And of course, everyone knows about Pure Storage. Pure is a leader uh, in Flash uh, and is initially driving disk out of the data centers. Now, Pure Storage acquired Portworx in about uh, uh, October 2020 to add uh, another uh, layer, you know, another uh, software business that can cater to not just the traditional uh, uh, enterprise workloads, but also the modern workloads like containers and Kubernetes. So we are an independent uh, business unit inside Pure. Uh, internally, we are called Cloud Native Business Unit. You know, outside of the world, we are Portworx. Can you talk about the evolution of, you know, DevOps uh, and also kind of emergence of platform engineering uh, but let's also look at, you know, how the data is changing because we are creating and consuming massive amount of data, which is kind of creating different challenges for team. And these teams also happen to be the same teams who are also dealing with data. The modern world is not just a lot of data. Modern world is a lot of apps also and uh, a lot of services, right? And in, in, a, in, in the new digital first uh, world, or a world driven by digital experiences, um, the the ability to help developers and application teams rapidly develop, prototype, develop, deploy, and iterate on apps is as critical as managing uh, the rapid uh, expansion and explosion of data. Right? Now with Kubernetes, both of them converge, right? You have a lot of different applications and a lot of, uh, which generate a lot of data, right? Now Kubernetes does a fantastic job of you know, in a, a giving ability for application teams, uh, and I'll get to the DevOps and platform teams in a second, uh, but giving the application teams uh, an ability to completely deploy and run their applications in a, quite an automated manner uh, on, um, you, know, on, you know, in their cloud or in data center. But what about data, right? I mean, you, as I said, when, when you have a lot of applications that are delivering a lot of experiences and, and enabling workflows and driving higher productivity, you got to run into you know a, a problem of an explosion in data, and also not just that, but ability to manage the data, put governance around it, you know, be uh, meet regulatory controls, and you need a data platform for that, and that's what Portworx uh, essentially is. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, why you know where is DevOps and where it has come from, and where is you know what is the emergence of platform engineering due to this ecosystem, right? So if you traditionally looked at DevOps, you know, obviously, you know, like if you go back a few years, it, the, the life of a DevOps engineer was probably one of the most difficult, uh, along with people in IT. So people in IT kind of sort of dealt with applications that were, you know, kind of mature, uh, had a vendor behind it. They would bring it in. They kind of, you know, babysit it and, you know, kind of treat it like a pet. Uh, a DevOps engineer inside a large software development shop is internal or external facing had to deal with a lot of different kinds of software built for different environments and, and support them to run in production. And God help them, there's one little change that had to be done, right? So uh, what typically happened as these modern applications um, uh, evolved and as the applications had to be deployed in different environments to go live to cater to different customer needs, there was a need to unify the packaging of the applications so you can deploy them everywhere. So that is where really containerization came in, right? You could build from your laptop, run it in the cloud or in data center, right? Now what that led to is a unification of the platform where you can now build your application, put it in a single platform that manages all of your containerized apps, and then gave the DevOps teams a single control point to put a lot of policies and governance and compliance and regulatory stuff and take care of you know, handling all of these application requirements, uh, the deployment requirements of a large organization, much more simpler in a single platform than having these hundreds of different application platforms and try to wrangle them and unify uh, the requirements around how to deploy and run apps. 
And that led to the emergence of the platform engineering, right? Where now a lot of different larger organizations have a platform engineering team that standardizes how to deploy and run apps. But it hasn't simplified their life uh, essentially until Kubernetes came and then Portworks uh, associated with it simplified how to deploy and run apps in production. Um, essentially kind of being the most important tools or pieces or software or solutions in the hands of a platform engineering team. How much adoption of platform engineering, because once again, you know, uh, when we look at things like DevOps, you know, these are not like kind of really, these are like you know, practices are there, you know, people say, hey, these labels. But realistically, when you look at platform engineering versus DevOps and a lot of other uh, disciples and practices, how much adoption you're seeing there and what is the actual impact that is happening on the team because a lot of time we talk about all these, you know, new terms, new cultural changes, but organizations who are actually solving all those problems, they, they get overwhelmed. Hey, now we have to embrace this. Sometimes there's a lot of confusion. So, so what are you seeing in the market? What we are seeing in the market is that platform engineering is taking hold as a very important discipline uh, in, a, in a lot of enterprises. Uh, in, in, in the modern world, uh, there are, every business is a software and a services business. You know, you have to build, uh, you know, digital apps to serve your customers better. You know, we have customers like JCI, a customer, a, a customer with a, a great pedigree, 125 years of existence, has, you know, has always been uh, at, the, at the forefront of industrial and home automation. Has, you know, if you can see with their open blue product, they have taken that and then digitized their entire customer and building management experience on multiple clouds, right? So, I mean, that's the, the reason I'm giving that example is that this, uh, the, the digitizing of apps is touching everybody and every business, and every business needs to be a software business in order to survive. And it cannot be no longer a, a small sliver of their investment or a outsourced group anymore. It needs to be a lot more of, you have to be a software, a, a SaaS business or digital apps business in order for you to succeed. So what that leads to is to have these uh, the platform engineering becomes the core, the crux of where all these applications come and live out their life inside an organization. And that's where a lot of investment is going in. Uh, so we see that has kind of evolved to become one of the most important functions in an enterprise. Now, it has, this evolution has taken a lot of great steps. I mean, it, is not, it was not easy. If you asked me 2016, 2017, how my life was, Definitely, it wasn't easy, right? It was, you know, all of the tools and all of the pieces of software, everything, Docker, Kubernetes, Portworks, everything was going through its maturity cycle, right? But I think we're in a great state now. If, you, if I can use the crossing the chasm example, I think we are well past the chasm here, right? We, we're past the early adopters, late adopter, late adopter stage. We're essentially entering the late majority where every enterprise uh, has, a, uh, has a cloud strategy, Every enterprise has an application strategy that's for homegrown internal facing apps and for external facing apps. And every enterprise uh, has to uh, be a software business in order for it to succeed. And, and they're adopting Kubernetes as the platform for uh, running apps in production uh, and absolutely to, you know, and using Portworx as well. So we are in that late majority adopter stage and platform engineering has definitely taken a hold as the uh, de facto place where enterprises are standardizing their applications on. Since you're talking about you know, crossing chasm, I also want to talk about, you know, fact about Kubernetes or cloud native is that it is complicated, it is complex, and uh, look at the landscape, how many logos are there, and things are not going to uh, become easier. Uh, the complexity is not going to go away. What we have to do is to help users deal with this complexity. Talk about how platform engineering enable developers, teams to deal with this complexity of Kubernetes and cloud native. It's funny you mentioned complexity and the vendor landscape, and I always joke internally that AI is the new Kubernetes, right? If you go on the AI landscape, you know there's like companies popping up every 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 two days, right? You know it's like how we will look at you know the world has changed uh, con considerably since ChatGPT was announced and now the, all of these LLNs and everything coming out, we look at everything with the lens of how can AI accelerate this? How can AI replace this, right? Essentially, Kubernetes has gone through that, but because it's such an infrastructure play, it is so invisible how it has transformed uh, a lot of different businesses, right? I mean, you know, look at it, OpenAI built ChatGPT on a 7,000 node Kubernetes cluster, right? So, but how many times did we talk about how much 
you know, the GPT, uh, tra the, the transformations that are happening in Kubernetes because such an invisible layer, right? So uh, it has definitely taken hold, right? It has, uh, you know, it, it is, there is definitely a lot of different offerings, but anytime a transformative technology like uh, Kubernetes or AI come, a lot of people try to solve the problem slightly differently, right? Because obviously these people see the power of it. Uh, and what happens in the long run is the, uh, the offerings that has the most, uh, uh, that, off, that, that solve the pain of the most customers and has the most commercial viability and has the best execution win out, right? Sometimes they may look the same. Sometimes the product offerings might, you know, the surface may appear the same, but devil is in the details and it, it, this is a long game and you have to really help the customers out, partner with them, co-create with them and evolve with them. And those are the vendor offerings that, you know, that usually uh, survive uh, out in these kind of transformations. So my recommendation to our customers is always to look for partners that invest with you in the long run, that want to grow with you and co-create with you, and you know, and and how to evolve the uh, how this platform will evolve because today's requirements may not be tomorrow's, and their how their business evolves is how the platform will evolve too. What advice do you have so that uh, organizations should approach? Uh, because there are a lot of who are in the early phase of adopting, you know, uh, platform engineering kind of disciplines, processes, so that they, they have things in the right order and right place. What, what advice do you have for them? You know, my call to action to all of, uh, you know, all of the organizations is, it's very simple, architect it right from the get-go, right? Uh, you know, there's, as you've mentioned, there are a lot of options out there, right? But look for, uh, uh, look for options that actually give you uh, enterprise-class support is widely deployed and proven and has had a long uh, uh, deployment uh, history uh, in the market and architected right from the get-go. And, uh, you know, and some, it's, it, it, sometimes it's easier to get, oh, let me try the free option. Let me try uh, uh, something else. And, you know, you don't build serious enterprise businesses with no enterprise class support from your vendors, right? So architect it right uh, and, you know, build that culture of, you know, how do you make your applications deployment and management more and more self-service where your developer teams are more empowered, uh, but, you know, uh, uh, and you don't have to get in the way of tinkering the infrastructure for them, right? That's what Kubernetes offers. That's what, you know, for vendors like Portworx and everybody else offers is to how to create that self-service infrastructure, right? Now, uh, it's important to also understand that, uh, you know, there are different kinds of offerings, right, that come in, right? Pick the ones that, you know, have delivered the end-to-end -end capabilities, not like day zero capabilities, not like day one. You need a vendor to partner with you all the way from day, zero, day zero to day two and beyond and evolve with you, right? So look at their history as well as to, you know, uh, how they can kind of evolve with you and go through you, with you in the journey, right? Those are three things I would say, you know, how you kind of like navigate in this path, right? But architecting it right and, and seeing the, you know, and then and having the vision of, how do you standardize? How do you consolidate so you can, you know, have a, you know, much more unified approach towards app development, deployment, and running in the organization? So you can control at one or two points, and the entire organization benefits. We are seeing those are the kind of leaders that are coming out as winners in this game. The amount of uh, progress, development, new t technology that we are seeing, we are lucky to be in this phase, you know, where we keep seeing new technology, which is also kind of intimidating because we have to keep ourselves updated with what's going on. How organizations, because uh, there are two things, first of all, just because there is the new shiny object does not mean every organization should move and embrace it. You know, there are so many comics about that as well. Oh, we should move to the cloud. W once again, just, just kind of, you know, expanding on your uh, advice is that when, when new things come up, should organizations look at, hey, the new thing is coming, we should embrace it, or they should start with what problem they are trying to solve and then look at tools and solutions that they might need versus going in reverse. And second thing is that how they should also have kind of parallel where they can continue to evaluate new technologies while keeping you know something which is stable and working and not getting overwhelmed with, hey, let's just move to Kubernetes, let's move to the next shiny object. Yeah. Does this question make sense? That's absolutely. It, it, it makes a terrific sense. And I'll tell you, this, this, is, this is my rubric when I look at new tech, right? I look at it in three different uh, dimensions. I say, how can this new tech help enhance our customer experience? How can the new tech help ex enhance our product experience, right? How our product functions, you know, how can it deliver more value? And how can we power this new tech, 
right? Can we do anything in our, our product that can actually help power this new technology more, enhance it, right? So, but many times it's important to understand almost all of the new technologies go through the hype cycle, right? There is going to be like the initial hype and there's going to be a trough of disillusionment. And it is very important to figure out how to, how to level up the investment at what level, right? So you usually learn at the top of the hype cycle to the trough of disillusionment, you're actually in the learning cycle, right? So don't invest too much, but learn, learn more, learn more, right? And then when you know that you're hit almost about to hit the bottom, you cannot obviously time it, right? Then that's when you like really go up level the investment because now we have understood what are the, who are the fireflies? What are those things that will never vanish? And who are the, where the real deal is, right? I mean, then you can go after it. So I think anytime when customers and, you know, others look at a new tech, I would look at it as a learning opportunity more than an investment opportunity at the beginning, right? Continue to learn and continue to see what you, where you can apply and go back to the rubric I mentioned, like which are the three categories I can leverage this to enhance and drive business value, right? And then go from there. And then if any of them click, make a mild investment and see, get customer feedback and iterate on it. How is Pure Storage helping these teams, you know, to once again, stay on the journey uh, and keep moving forward. Portworks has always been a tremendous partner to our customers, right? I mean, we don't look at ourselves as a vendor. We actually look at it as an extent, uh, look at ourselves as an extension of our customers, this team. We are we partner with them right on, you know, right when our partnership starts, uh, almost at you know at the first presentation, especially when we meet a new customer, because we go in and we're we're looking to troubleshoot. What is it? What are their pains? We're not trying to sell anything there in most of the cases. Uh, we're also kind of learning and understanding what are our customers, where is our customer, what are their journeys, what are the pain points. So our approach is very consultative, right? Because a lot of customers have gone and said, you know, maybe not, or maybe our team goes and says, maybe not, a, you know, they're not either ready for us or they don't have a similar problem that we are trying to solve. But hey, let's keep in touch. Let's understand what the revolution uh, is looking like and how we can help them you know, kind of share our common knowledge a little bit to help them out, right? So we're essentially a partner more than a vendor. Uh, and from a value standpoint, what Portworks really does is that Portworks hides the complexity of the underlying infrastructure, physical, virtual cloud to our customers. So essentially they have a global fabric that they can deploy and run their apps and they can, you know, they automatically get HA, uh, uh, data protection, uh, encryption, data security, and they get, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the backup and recovery and DR, and then, you know, complete suite of data services that we can manage from day zero to day two for them. So we deliver data and storage and database automation uh, at scale for our customers. So they never have to worry about the, uh, uh, and deal with the intricacies of it and continue to serve their application teams, uh, you know, a lot better. Right? So that is where we essentially partner and simplify the lives uh, of our customers. Essentially, I'll have to tell you like one customer quote is, one of our customers said, Pre prior to Portworks, they, would, they had never had a holiday season where you know, they, they, they were not pulled into their office, they were on, on call. After Portworks, they could go to watch a, uh, a, a Thanksgiving game or like a, a holiday game, and they never had to worry about their infrastructure because Portworks uh, you know, handles all of that for them. Mankar, thank you so much for taking time out today and, of course, talk about this topic. Thanks for all those insights, and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. So, Abdel, again, amazing questions. Uh, thanks for uh, having me here. i really looking forward to connecting with you again and sharing more about our journey and uh, how our customers are innovating.